Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on Troubleshooting Error Messages. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from our CompTIA A Plus 220 702, that's our practical application exam, section 2.4, where we need to evaluate and resolve common issues. We're going to look at problems when you boot your computer. When you start up your computer, we'll go through how to look through different events and try to get a better understanding of how we can troubleshoot and resolve these issues. Let's talk first about boot errors. Whenever you see a problem when you're first starting, starting up your computer, you realize right away this is a really bad problem. You're not even getting to the operating system yet. It's immediately stopping before anything really gets going and gives you an error. And that is a really bad thing. Fortunately, these problems are usually quite specific. They give you very specific error messages. And the reality is, unlike an operating system where thousands of things might go wrong, really there are only a certain number of things at that point that could really send you off the tracks. So you really have a limited number of things that you have to go through during the troubleshooting process. And that certainly helps a little bit. At least you know that it can only be a certain number of things. We're going to take advantage of something in Windows called the Windows Recovery Console. A number of these problems can be resolved from the Recovery Console itself. So we'll use that to be able to understand how to get into our operating system, change some files around, modify some things so that the operating system can begin to boot. If you've never used the Windows Recovery Console before, now would be a good time to get a little bit of practice. You never want your first time into the Recovery Console to be the moment you're having a problem. You should usually get in well before that time and get comfortable with the environment. Then you'll know exactly what you need to do whenever a problem occurs. You also, throughout this particular video, any video obviously, but this particular one, be very certain of what you're doing. If you're going to move a file, delete a file, rename a file, change anything on your hard drive, modify anything with the boot partition, change any of those things. You want to be very certain that what you're doing is going to actually solve the problem. And you need to understand when you type a command in and you hit enter, you should already understand exactly what the result of that particular command could be because you can really break some things in the operating system if you don't take special care to do exactly the right things. If you're booting up your computer and you see it, one of these types of messages, your problem probably is in the boot sector. And these messages might be an invalid partition table. You might get a message that says you're having an error loading the operating system or a missing operating system. The operating system is not found. Sometimes that can be caused by a problem with the boot sector, not knowing where it really should be going to boot that operating system up. It's not that your operating system isn't there anymore. It's just that your computer doesn't know where to go to find it. Fortunately, we can resolve a number of those things just by rebuilding the boot sector of your computer. The Recovery Console can help a lot with this. We're going to need the installation media, the boot a CD or DVD that Windows came on, we will need the administrator password. And that's an extremely important piece of this. We cannot get access to this drive through the Recovery Console unless we have the administrator password. And the command that we're going to use in this Windows XP boot sector is a command called fix boot. And we're going to do that with a fix boot and we'll specify the drive name. Let's try this. Let's go into the Recovery Console, give this a shot, and see what we get. Instead of showing you this on a live Windows XP machine, I'm going to run this in Oracle's virtual box. And I'm going to use this Windows XP that I have here that has a Windows XP drive. It's a four gig partition on that drive. And I have virtually added the CD-ROM for my Windows XP installation media as a virtual CD-ROM in here. So if it was a real machine, you'd obviously be putting that into the real CD-ROM. And let's start the machine. And it puts it over here on my other screen. So we'll bring this back where you can see it. And it says, press a key to boot from the CD. We're going to do that because we don't want it to go to the hard drive where we're having that boot startup problem. We want it to begin this normal Windows setup process. And this is exactly what you would expect to see during the normal Windows launch. Whenever you're working in that Windows front end and you're um, working through this view, everything is in this text-based view. And that way you're able to use this with almost any a type of display adapter that you're going to run into. Once these first setup files are loaded, 
We're going to get the prompt that will uh, ask us if we'd like to install Windows, which we don't want to do. And we'll get another prompt that asks us if we would like to use the recovery uh, options within Windows. And that's exactly where we'll be going with this. Once all your drivers load, you have the option to set up Windows XP now, which is what we don't want to do. We can repair a Windows XP installation using the recovery console. That sounds good. Or we can quit with F3. Let's press R to start this process of using the recovery console. What pops up is Microsoft Windows XP Recovery Console. The Recovery Console provides system repair and recovery functionality. Type exit to quit the Recovery Console and restart the computer. Then it lists out all of the different Windows installations that it can find on this drive. And at this point, if we see that there is a Windows installation, we're feeling pretty good about being able to recover at least some of the data on the drive. The number one, this first Windows installation, is the only one on the drive. So I'm going to type in the number one, because it asks which Windows installation would I like to log on to. And I'm going to hit Enter. And it's going to then go to that installation and prompt for the administrator password. And as I mentioned, you have to have the administrator password to get to this point. Once you type that in and hit Enter, you'll be at the Windows Command Prompt. This is the Recovery Console. And if you were to pop out to a DOS box or a Command Prompt in your Windows, you would have pretty much the same prompt. But if I type Help here, you'll see that you do not have exactly the same user interface and you definitely don't have the same number of options available. This is a very limited number of commands available. But one of the things that you will notice is there is a fix boot command that I can run right from here. So let's do that. Let's do a fix boot. In fact, let's do a, a help fix boot before we do that. And you'll get a description of what this does. It says use fix boot with a drive. Uh, drive colon, specify the drive to which a boot sector will be written, overriding the default choice of the system boot partition. It's only supported on x86-based computers. So let's run fix boot to C colon. And it says the target partition is C. Are you sure you want to write a new boot sector to partition C? I'll hit Y and hit Enter. And it says the file system on the startup partition is NTFS. Fixed boot is writing a new boot sector. And the new boot sector was successfully written. And at that point, you can try rebooting your computer and see if some of those invalid partition or operating system not found problems are corrected just by fixing the boot partition of your hard drive. If a user happens to get on the computer and start deleting files that perhaps they really shouldn't have been deleting, you may get errors like this with the operating system boot files, like NT loader is missing and NT loader is compressed. You'll see those sometimes in Windows XP, because XP is using that NT loader to have all of those things occur. Now, well, fortunately, if you're in at the recovery console, you now have some options to copy new files over or to modify files that might already be on the computer. Let's look to see what options might be available to us. Let's see what happens if we happen to be missing one of those files, those very important boot files. If we were to start up our Windows XP, this is the same one we were just using for that recovery console. And we start it up. I'm not going to have it boot from the CD. I'm just going to have it continue on to boot from the hard drive. And it says, NT loader is missing. Press Control Alt Delete to restart. Well, that's not what we'd like. We would like to have NT loader there, but obviously somebody has moved or deleted that NT loader program. So let's use the Recovery Console to be able to get in and really copy over a brand new version of that NT loader and see if we can't get this fixed. So I've rebooted now on that same computer having that NT loader problem. I've had my Windows Media CD in there. And we're at this prompt where it says to repair Windows XP using the Recovery Console. We press R. And now we're going to be listing all of the different Windows installations on this computer. I'll select one. I'll type the administrator password. And we're here to prompt. And if I do a change directory to the root of that drive and look at it, you can see, sure enough, there is no NT loader anywhere on this drive. I don't see that file at all. Well, we know we have one on the Windows Media, so maybe we can copy one from there. Let's first see what's on the Windows Media. Let me move to that D drive. And I've got a number of directories here. If you move into the Intel i386 directory, and we do a directory of NT loader or everything that starts with NTL, you'll see right there there is an NT loader file right there. Let's copy that one over and see what we can do with it. Let's copy NT loader to C colon backslash. And it just copied the file. If we go back to drive C, you can see that NT loader file is right there. 
Now let's restart and see if this does anything else for us. I'm going to insert, well, we don't even have to insert a control delete. Let me just exit and it will reboot automatically. And now we'll have not boot from the CD. I want it to continue now and see if he can't start up the operating system. Last time we immediately got a message that said, can't start NT loader. Now we get a Windows splash screen. So now we've gotten past that point. We've re restored that file. We've recovered the problem. And now Windows is going to boot normally. Sometimes the installation of a new operating system or building new partitions creates problems with the boot any file, and Windows won't be able to start. In Windows XP, we can resolve this by running the boot CFG command from the recovery console. And there's different options. We can list, we can add, and we can rebuild the boot configuration of your computer to try to get past some of these problems. If your boot any is wrong, you'll probably see something like this. Windows could not start because of a computer disk hardware configuration problem. Could not read from the selected boot disk. Check the boot path and disk hardware. Please check the Windows documentation, et cetera, et cetera. So we've really created a problem for ourselves. I've modified my boot any to specify the wrong partition and a Windows that doesn't exist somewhere else. So I've really got this one pretty well screwed up. Let's see if we can get into the recovery console and run the boot CFG and rebuild that any file. Let's launch our recovery console so that we can run that boot CFG. And let's let it continue to find that Windows that might be there. Did find a Windows installation using the recovery console, so that sounded promising. And I'm going to start the administrator password right in there. And I've got that boot CFG command. And you can see I can add, I can rebuild, I can scan, I can list. I can do a lot of different things. Let's look at what's in the boot list right now. I'll do a boot CFG slash list. And there are no current boot entries available to display. Well, that's not something that I like to see. That certainly is a problem for this particular drive. Let's have this configuration rebuild what we have here. Let's run boot CFG. And I'm going to rebuild and have Windows figure this out for myself. It's going to scan all the disks I have for any Windows installations. and even tells you, please wait. This could take a while. And it says that it, it did identify a Windows installation. Do I want to add this to my boot list? Yes, I do. Let's type Y and hit Enter. Enter the load identifier. So I'm going to need to know how I want to identify this configuration. And let's just call this the default Windows XP for this particular machine. And I don't want any operating system load options, so I'll just hit Enter. Now let's see what it found. If I do a boot CFG list, it says, OK, we created one for you. And we now should be able to boot from that. I'm going to type Exit, which exits out of the recovery console and reboots the computer. I don't want to boot from the CD. I want to continue on now to the operating system. And it now gives me a choice of what I'd like to run. This was probably the Windows XP Professional that's there is the one that's probably broken. The default Windows XP is the one I just added. And if I hit Enter, it's now going to launch the normal Windows that we had there. So even though we created a mess of the existing boot any, we were able to get into the recovery console, have it automatically find some Windows configurations, rebuild that boot any, and now we're back to where we started. One of the things you've noticed up to this point is everything we've done has been in Windows XP. Well, that's because in Windows Vista, there's a different process that you go through to recover from some of these very common boot problems. Well, in the Windows Vista, what we do is put in our installation media, we choose to repair our computer, and we simply do a startup repair. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's Windows Vista. Let's tell it that my name is English, or my language is English, and that I want to use English and a US keyboard for this. Here's the option right at the main Windows Vista page to repair my computer. And when this comes up, I'll get an option for where is the partition and what recovery options might be available to me for the Windows installations on that partition. Once Windows has scanned that partition, I can click Next. And here's the options that I have. Startup Repair, System Restore, Windows Complete PC Restore, a Memory Diagnostics, and a Command Prompt. Well, this is exactly where I can go now to automatically fix problems that are preventing Windows from starting. You can simply do a startup repair, and it's going to go figure out all of those things on its own. It's going to go through a number of different things that it knows to be common startup problems. If it finds a problem, it will stop and inform you of what it's doing. Or it's going to say that startup repair didn't detect a problem. You can now view the diagnostics and repair details. 
There we go. And it'll tell you exactly what it looked at and how it went through this. And you can view advanced options for system recovery and support and go back to that original list of options that we had. So Windows Vista, much easier now. You click a button, it does a lot of those things we were doing from the recovery console. It does it automatically. You don't even have to type anything else. Occasionally, when logging in, you may run across a particular application that's failing or giving an error message. You may not be sure exactly what program that is. Sometimes you can look at the message itself, and it may tell you what application it is. Sometimes it's very generic. This one says Windows System Error, Unknown Hard Error, and I'm not even sure what application it was that caused that. And sometimes you can go to Google and type the message into Google and get some information back. But it may be the case that you have to use something like msconfig and start turning off certain programs during the startup process to see if turning one of those off is going to fix the problem that we happen to have. Some of these errors are also stored in your event log. You can go to the event viewer and look at a lot of information. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming. But somewhere in there is probably the information you need, because that's going to log all of these things that may have happened in the past. And if you're troubleshooting somebody else's computer, and you're asking them, what was the message that popped up? Did you write it down? No, they didn't. Well, I bet in the event log, there'll be a clue about what may have happened during that time frame. You can also use the event viewer remotely. You can connect to other machines' event viewers without actually getting up and going over and having a look at that computer. That may be able to save you a little bit of time, especially if there's a long distance between you and the system that's having the problem. Let's review some of the things we've learned from our Troubleshooting Error Messages module. What command can write a new partition boot sector to the system partition? We did that from our recovery console in Windows XP, and that was the program called FixBoot. What utility can rebuild the boot.any file? That was the other program we ran at the prompt, at the recovery console prompt, and that was bootcfg. And our last question is, which utility can help with startup error messages? There was one where we could turn, turn programs on and off with this utility to help find the problematic application, and that was msconfig. Well, that covers what we needed to know for our 22702, section 2.4. We've now gone through boot errors, startup errors, and we've gone through how to view some of those things in the event viewer. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free a videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.